All right, so in the last episode of Revitalizing Project Large 2.0, I went and changed out the lower suspension arms down here uh, to the uh, Turtle Racing Delrin arms. Now these are made of plastic, but a high impact and uh, it can bend a, a fair ways before there's any kind of real breakage in here. So that's a big plus for this. Now I need to move on. Uh, See, the only real mega thing I want to do, check this out, got some road rash right there on the uh, spark plug wire. I need to change out this wire altogether, right? So I'm going to have to remove the engine today, uh, take off the fan case cover and uh, swap this out for a new one. Hopefully we can get this started. As a side note, many people ask me, even years after I debuted this stand, where do I get it and what is it called? It is actually called a rocket stand by Axis RC, if you can see that right there. I had the uh, owner make me one, had it sent out years ago, and I've been using it on this Losi 5T. Losi is the company that makes this big giant truck, and if to really put it into perspective for you, I'm five foot ten. This truck is huge. Of course, it's all gas powered. Here's the gas tank. It does have a lithium polymer battery that goes with it to run the electronics, the giant servos. People often ask me, uh, how long do I get per tank? And it really depends. It's just like on a full size vehicle, you know, uh, how, how do you throttle? If you're heavy on the throttle, I'm looking at about a half an hour runtime, maybe even 40 minutes, depending on the track. Now looking at the back of this, everything is pretty much good to go, nice and clean. As a side install, what I'm going to do right now is actually switch out this plastic body post mount. Now check this out. I got this at Dave's Discount Motors, DDM Online, uh, alloy rear body mount. I'm going to be able to swap this out. Next time I won't have to worry about snapping off these top posts. Uh, this is a clever design. Here you got the screw and the pin that actually threads over the screw that goes into the two mounting posts on the end. And then that way when you run your pins through, you have something nice and solid that doesn't break off. Anything metal on metal that's getting screwed together, I normally add some thread locker, of course blue because it says on the bottom it is removable, uh, unless it's in a high vibration zone, and then I usually take a chance on some red Loctite, which is a little bit stronger, but you usually have to use heat to remove. So be careful with the one that you use, but always use it. Now remember, a little dab goes a long way in more than just thread lock use. I still gotta line up the holes, but look at that. All installed, nice. I'll spin those pins around to match up with the body pins. Look at that. Ready to rock and roll. Those won't be busting off anytime soon. And as I glance down underneath the plate that I have, I can see I'm missing an insert right here. This insert actually has a number on it. You'll see it says 20 right there. That's the number of teeth on the pinion of the motor, of the engine, yeah, I should say, right here, right here. So the reason why is it's an offset for the gear mesh. So missing one isn't like a big deal, but that is a motor, an engine mount. So I wanna make sure to fix that and replace that right away. I'm sure I've got another 20 around here somewhere. If you have a different pinion size, it'll say a different number right here, 18 or 19 or whatever you have in there. Okay, so I've removed the other two inserts and this one, this uh, screw is actually seized and starting to round out a little bit there. So I'm gonna take the torch and heat this up and then I'm gonna use a hammer and slightly tap this in there to give it as much depth into that screw as possible. I also wanna make sure that there's no uh, debris or anything in there so that this bit can get as much bite to get that out. Just my goal is to uh, help any thread lock that's in there just melt away so when I go to turn the screw head, it won't uh, cause any resistance. Yeah. 
Okay, now trying to get in to remove the exhaust pipe assembly down there, the mount, is a huge pain. Also, this uh, one right here, this screw right here that actually attaches uh, to the engine, its mate on the other side needs a ball end, and typically they break very easily unless you've got a good quality ball end, which I do not here. So I'm just removing uh, the top tension spring, which brings these two pieces of the pipe together. That way I can slide one side of the exhaust pipe out, back up here, show you that I've got a quick release on the actual throttle itself. So this is the throttle linkage to the servo that controls the uh, throttle, of course, to the engine. Now that it's detached, I can lift it up off to the side. You'll see here this gray wire is actually the kill switch. So I can remotely kill the engine if I have a runaway or something like that, or if it lose signal, uh, it'll automatically shut itself down. It's connected to this switch right here. Now I wanna remove the back fan cover so I can access the uh, coil, which is attached to the spark plug wire. Screws are removed, I can go ahead and remove the cover. Beautiful visual inspection, no missing fins on the flywheel. Also looking on the inside, just a little bit of dirt on the pull starter cord, not a big deal, but if it was, I do have these quick release um, uh, pins which are perfect for just swapping these out in just a moment's notice. Now a little bit of rust it looks like on the inside here. Not a big deal, I can remove that. It's probably from when I washed it down. But I'm gonna remove this spark plug wire and switch it out for the new one. Okay, my Kraftworks RC high performance modified spark plug wire, might as well if I'm gonna switch it out. Here are the instructions. Looks good. And just taking the outer sheath off the bottom and then I can basically grab this wire and just start twisting it. And in an unscrewing motion, it's just a bit of glue that's on the inside, I can actually get this wire to come straight out. So for those wondering why I switched over, <laughs> I think a side-by-side -side picture really, uh, you know, tells the story. Have a look at this on top where it was very, very thin. And of course, just more of a high durability performance plug wire. And of course, before I go and put it on, I'm going to make sure I've slid uh, the heat shrink over this end of the wire. I've trimmed the end hairs on there just to make it a little <laughs> easier to squeeze into the hole, a little cleaner. All right, and I'm going to take this opportunity to uh, clean the prongs on the kill switch just to make sure that I've got uh, a good connection there. All right, so now that I have the engine, ta-da, mounted back inside, everything is reattached. I was gonna test to see if I could get some spark out of this plug here, because it's fairly new. Um, but when I went to install the wire on it, of course, this top part was slightly longer uh, than the pin allows. So that's no big deal. I'm just gonna trim up the end of this, and then that way I'll be able to test it out to see if I'm getting spark. Okay, so now that it's on there, I'm going to go ahead and just touch that to the top of the cooling head uh, right here. And then that way it's grounded. And when I pull on the drawstring, do I get spark? Oh, I saw one. Yeah, that means the install went proper. I'm looking right down here. Let's see if I can get a better angle on that for you. Yeah, it's there. Hand tight, and then just a quarter turn. Well, not even. The only concern I have is that this gas was actually mixed one year ago, but it worked in the Rockstar, so, which is a giant boat of mine, so it probably will work in this, no problem. Still rocking my killer RC 7200 milliamp hour 2S LiPo. Kill switch, active. Just gonna tighten up these tires. They are 24 mil. Don't wanna lose these wheel nuts when you're riding, because good luck in finding them. That's right, an RC car that you use a breaker bar on to tighten the tires.
Well, there we are, my friends. I think everything is completed and ready for me to go ahead and try to start this up for the first time. It has been years. Look at this. It's almost a work of art, wouldn't you say? It's just, I know I'm geeking out, I'm nerding out. Comment below if you think this is a beast machine because I'm telling you, I am ready to get in there and see if I can start this up. Now, just a few soft pulls to begin with. Oh man, there's a lot of compression in there. You can see it, hey? Nice. Okay, I'm good to go. Oh, almost. Okay, okay, okay. I like where we're going here. Could use some tuning maybe. Warming it up. Definitely a tune. Could be that old gas too. But we're getting her. My first clue that it won't start is because it smells funny. And I'm suspecting old gas, so I'm getting that rid of that. Yes, I know many of you are already shouting at the screen, why are you using used gas on such a, a nice machine? But at the same time, I hate to waste things, so might as well try it since it didn't work. That way I can recycle it and move on. I removed the spark plug and I'm just purging the head of any kind of old gas that's in there. Just cycling the motor a few times. You can see that this pull cord is actually at the end of its life, probably just the spring and it's dead. So I'm going to just use these quick release pins and switch over to a new pull cord while I'm at it. Oh, that's much nicer. Okay, explain that to me again. Just about the, tell me why again, because everyone's listening. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I find that when a carburetor has sat around for a long time, and I don't mean like a month, but, yeah. you know, definitely an extended period through a whole entire year, that the fuel will evaporate, and it's a two-stroke gas mixture, oil and gasoline mixture, and it'll dry out and evaporate, and it'll leave behind a bit of you know, oily residue. Gunk. Exactly, some residue. And if you open the needles right up, I mean, it also works taking them right out and cleaning them, but open them right wide and start the engine, and it'll kind of clean those needles off, and then you can just close them back in again, and it'll run. Choke down. Come on, baby. Oh, come on. Whew. And so goes the story on this hobby. I did not get it started today. Do I chalk it up as a fail? Of course I do. But on the other hand, uh, there are many things about this hobby that I enjoy. And that's tinkering and figuring out why stuff doesn't work. Yes, it's getting lots of fuel. I adjusted the needles endlessly. Uh, I did change the fuel, so that's a fresh mix. Everything's fine there. My kill switch is working. The gap on my spark plug, good. But check this out, and Everett and I chatted more off camera. Look down here. This is the wrong pipe for this engine. I used to have, I believe, a Widowmaker on here uh, from uh, O'Neill Brothers Racing. Now this is the same pipe, it didn't quite match up to this one. And if you look underneath, way down there, hard to see, if I go on this side, 
right down there behind the drive shaft down there it's wet I have gas coming through the head dripping from this point right here so I don't have proper compression right there so it's not only the gasket that needs to be changed but I need to change out this pipe so I have a proper seal here and I'm darn sure that's why this wouldn't have started and kept going that's the issue so guys I could pull on this cable all day and yes I'm a little disappointed I couldn't fire it up for you but it gives me another opportunity to make another great RC adventure video in the future thanks a lot guys leave your comments down below would you ever try if you had the room to have one of these in your place to run and race a fifth scale machine leave it in the comment section below smash that like button and we'll see you in the next episode of rc adventures now get outside or if you're like me and can't go outside at least stay inside and do the maintenance that you need to do see ya bye guys